Good morning, and welcome to this January 2nd, 2022 Communion Sunday Media Cast of the Heinz Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, located at 408 North Madison Street, Albany, Georgia, 31701, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. Or L. Spragan, Jr. The presiding elder is the Reverend Dr. Bobby K. Galladay, Sr., and the presiding prelate is Bishop Thomas L. Brown, Sr. We also celebrate today as the first Sunday in the new year. Welcome to 2022 and all that God holds for you and will allow to come to you in it. Please get your bread and your juice now so that when we come to the communion ritual, you will be ready to join us. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will be blessed by today's service, that you will accept the Lord Jesus as your personal savior, and that the Spirit of the Lord will prevail in your life. join in the general prayer of confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignations against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Old Testament scripture reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. Today's readings come from the King James Version. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye. Praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off. And say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him, 
as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord, for wheat, and for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their souls shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. The New Testament scripture reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word.
Today's message is titled, Better Than a New Year, and is based in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 10. It reads as follows from the King James Version. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him, as a shepherd doth his flock. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name in this new year. We eagerly want to hear from you, need to hear from you. Give us your voice, direction, your word for this day as we begin this new year in worship. Have your way, O oh God, in our lives in our church, in our community, in our world. Glorify yourself in this moment. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Better than a new year. In the prophecies of the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, we see that the prophet has spent a good number of years trying to convince the people of Judah that if they do not amend their ways, then God is going to do to them what he has already done to their sister nation, Israel. Judah's leaders never turn a listening ear to Jeremiah, not really. So the preaching of repentance becomes primarily the prophecy of destruction. Yet here in the 31st chapter, God promises restoration by God's grace. God will restore the land. God will restore the people to the land. And God will restore the joy of Judah, the people, in their God. In verses 7 through 10 of Jeremiah chapter 31, God will not only transform the old, God will replace the old with the new and give a new beginning. In verse 11, we see that what has separated us from God has also separated us from each other. Sin has done this. We have allowed it. We have entered it. We have done it willfully. Sin has separated us from God and sin has separated us from each other. God, however, is the newness. God is the new beginning that we need. God is our release from the captivity of sin, and he leads us into the newness that he has prepared for us. We're not left to find it on our own. You've heard me say that before. God has scattered us. God will gather us. This is a gathering both to one another, and it is a gathering unto God. Many persons have eagerly anticipated gathering themselves during this holiday and festive season, have celebrated even, have not only anticipated it, but some have even gathered, have come together as family and friends and loved ones as in times past. Yet, there are others who are still waiting. God is also waiting on us, on the time when we will seek to gather, not just in the house of worship, but in the presence of God, which time is not dependent on the physical structure, not on the physical house of worship, but it does depend on our physical bodies. It actually does depend on your body and your spirit. Verses 12 through 14 say that the joy of restoration is more than just a restoral to physical or geographical things. Yes, God promised to restore the people to the land Yes, God promised to bring them back. Yes, God promised that there would be a rebuilding, if you will. But, but what we are talking about in terms of restoration, what God means is more than just a return to the physical. It is more than just a return to a once familiar place of living or working or worship. And many times when we talk about let's get back to normal or we're looking for the normal, that's what we mean. But God means more than that. 
God means a return to joyful fellowship and fellowship with one another. A joyful fellowship, a joyful coming together, but also a joyful coming together with each other and especially with God. And the God who feeds all living things shall feed us when we return to him because we shall desire him. We shall desire to be nourished at his hand Inasmuch as the baby desires to be fed with his mother's milk, even so we shall desire to be fed from the hand of God. We should desire to be fed and to be filled with the goodness of the Lord. We do not praise ourselves in this, yet such an opportunity to be fed at the hands of God, to, at the hand of God to gather in his name, to fellowship with one another, especially to gather in worship. The, these are opportunities uh, for, uh, for not only the restoration to occur, to experience that, to experience united fellowship with family and friends and loved ones, but it's also especially an opportunity for praise to God. It's a reason to praise God. No, we, we do not praise ourselves in this. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot deliver ourselves. We cannot restore ourselves. That's what we see here in the scripture. We see that God is saying that, it, it, and that all of this is a gracious act of God. We have been singled out for this restoration. We have been singled out for this newness and renewal, not because of our goodness, but because of the goodness of God, not because of anything we have done or, or earned, but be simply because of the grace of God, the unmerited grace of God. Yes, like Israel, we have been chosen out of all the peoples of the earth. We are chosen, however, because we have chosen to know God as God has made God's self known to us. God chose the children of Jacob not because they were anything special outside of, of, of their being chosen by God. They, they didn't have any special merits. They didn't come with God already being somebody, having a name or notoriety or position or anything like that. God chose them out of all the people on the earth when they were nobodies because they accepted this God as their God. God chose to continue his presence with them because they chose him as their God. In, in, in other words, God said, I want to make myself known to you and to the world through you. And because they accepted this word, this designation from God, because they accepted what God wanted to do with them and through them, God accepted them and chose them to reveal himself to the world. It's a continuing revelation, but it gets even better. For God has not only chosen the, the children of Jacob by progeny, by, by offspring, if you will, but, but God has expanded his invitation to all who are the children of Jacob by faith. Consider the New Testament scripture that was read from the book of Ephesians. What does it say there? In verses 1 through 7 of Ephesians chapter 1, we understand that this is the best newness of all. Better than a new year. And I know we are excited and glad to be in a new year. We know that there are some who almost made it up into the new year, to the very last minute perhaps even, but, but didn't make it into this new year. So we're glad to be here. But God says, I've got something better than a new year. Better than a new year, better than a new beginning in time. These verses describe a new beginning of the whole person. God says, I don't want to just bring you into a new place, a new time, a new era. God says, I want to bring you into a new you. It really is more than something you receive, this, this gift of God, though, though it is a gift. It is the fact of your being made over and viewed in a new way because you yourself have been received instead of being rejected by God. God says, I want to receive you in a new way. I want to see you in a new light, in a different light. And that light is the light of Christ. Verses 8 through 9 and 13 through 14 say we have been given new lives, new opportunities, and a new future because of the graciousness of God. 
Furthermore, God has also given us knowledge. This is not limited earthly knowledge of physical phenomena. This is a knowledge of heavenly spiritual things through divine revelation. This is not special revelation as some people like to talk about revelation. This is not special revelation. This is revelation that is made available and given to all to all who will receive this newness of life that is in Christ Jesus, that is Christ Jesus. And for which person, which purpose he came into the world, that we might have life, that we might live in the light, receive the light, walk in the light, that he might be the light in us and, and through us. Keep this in mind, though. Jesus didn't come into the world to give us divine knowledge. Some people say that all you need to do is know and, 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 and you're saved or, or, or that's the highest purpose and the highest goal and the highest achievement you can have in life is to, is to know. But, but Jesus did not come into the world just so that we would know. No, G Jesus came into the world that we might know him as our salvation. When we receive this information by faith, God confirms by his own Holy Spirit within us that we have received the truth. What is knowledge by faith, or what begins as knowledge by faith, becomes knowledge by fact and by experience. When you receive God by faith, when you receive Jesus by faith, then that faith becomes actualized in your life, in your soul, in your very being. And then finally in verses 10 through 12 and again in verses 13 and 14, we see the holy purpose of God in all these things. God doesn't just want to save us from physical destruction and to rescue us from our earthly enemies. Neither does God merely offer us a makeover and recreation for others to see us and for this world to see us only. And he doesn't do it for this life only, for this world only. No, God has a, a, a greater purpose, a higher purpose, if you will. God has desired us that he might make us to be new creatures in life, in this life so that we might be acceptable citizens in his new creation. We talk about, we read in scripture, that there shall be a, a new heaven and a new earth. But in order for us to see and, and to be received into that new heaven and new earth with great joy, we have to be made new creatures now. And that's what God wants to do in us through Christ, in Christ. Yes, yes, we, we'll, we'll become acceptable citizens, new citizens in the new creation if we are recreated by God now. This comes to us even with a divine guarantee. Verses 13 and 14 in, in Ephesians chapter 1 say that when we trust Christ for our salvation, after hearing the gospel, you can't trust Christ if you haven't heard the gospel, but it's in the preaching of the gospel, the teaching, the declaration of the gospel that we learn about Christ. And when you accept Christ after hearing the gospel, then God seals us, labels us, marks us with the Holy Spirit who was promised by Jesus to all those who would become his disciples by faith in him. The Holy Spirit dwells in us and makes us to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have been saved because Christ has already purchased us with his blood. And that we are even now just waiting to be taken to our heavenly home. The Holy Spirit is our earnest, our guarantee, our security deposit from God. You know, when you decide you're going to buy a house, sometimes they ask you for some earnest money to make sure that, that, that you really want to buy the house. Well, the Holy Spirit is our earnest from God, our earnest of God. He is God's earnest in us. That what he has promised, he will deliver. Isn't God wonderful? He tells us that he has something for us, something new that we don't deserve and, and can't earn, then God does what it takes to make sure we get it. 
sending Jesus. And finally, God gives us proof that what he has done for us is real, for real. Just in case we began to doubt what God has promised. Just in case we began to doubt his word, God says, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm coming to live in you. Surely, God wants to do a new thing. God wants to do a, a new thing to us, in us, for us, and through us. If you really want a new beginning, if you really want a new year, start with a new you in Christ. The same Christ who made all things in the beginning. You know, Genesis says, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. John tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and goes on to say that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and, and this same Word who was in the beginning is the same Word who, through whom all things were made and by whom all things were made. This same Christ who made all things in the beginning and in whom is life itself. He is life. This same Christ is the light of all human beings. He has come into the darkness of our world with our propensity to sin, to be the light for us, to show us and to become for us the way to everlasting goodness and life. He who is life has come that we might have life. He who is light has come that we might have light and be light. Verse 12 of John chapter 1, the Gospel of John chapter 1 says that though he is available to everyone, however, he can be received only by those who believe in him as he has spoken about himself. Not what they want to believe about him. Not who you want to say he is. But what he says and about himself and who he himself says that he is. If you believe that, if you receive that by faith, then Christ will make you new. He who by his own power made all things has given us the power to become children of God by his blood. Because of his life, we have life. That's what we celebrate when we celebrate Holy Communion. We celebrate the fact that, that in him, we are alive. In him, we are saved. In him, we have life. In him, we are new creatures. In him, we have the victory. In him, we are overcomers. In him, we have the promise of, of not only deliverance and salvation for this life, but we have the promise of eternal life in heaven with him when this world comes to an end. When there is the new creation, the new heaven, and the new earth, in Jesus, the one we celebrate in Holy Communion, we can know, we do know, that we too are new creatures and we'll be a part of that new creation. An acceptable, loved, brought in, ushered in part of that new creation. Verses 16 and 17 of John chapter 1 say, And of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. There is a newness that is ours to have now, and that newness is a sign and guarantee of the expansion and fullness that is to be ours in the future. Yes. Thank God for the new year. But if you want a better new year, let Christ give you a new start. Let him make you new in his blood and keep you new in the power of his Holy Spirit so that you may be restored to the likeness of Christ. Not just restored to a building, not just restored to your family, but restored to a likeness, the likeness of Christ. 
and received into the promised new God-filled glorious world prepared just for you. Receive Christ today. Receive Christ. In Jesus' name, I preach this message. And I offer him to you. Even as we prepare to take Holy Communion, receive Holy Communion, I offer you Christ, the living Christ, for your salvation and newness. Amen. Let us prepare now for the service of Holy Communion. If you have not already done so, go ahead and get your bread and your juice or what symbols you will be using for the body and blood of our Lord Jesus so that you may participate with us in this sacrament. Hear this invitation to the Lord's table. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God 
and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees, or assuming some other appropriate posture of holy submission. The Prayer of Consecration Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction of the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Take now the bread that is before you, and eat. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of him. Take now the cup that is before you and drink. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of him. And you have shown by your receiving this sacrament that you remember the Lord Jesus, his suffering, death, burial, and resurrection for you, for the forgiveness of your sins, that you may have entrance into life eternal with him. If you have received the sacrament by this faith, go in peace, be at peace, love and serve the Lord, love and serve others in his name, knowing that your sins are forgiven.
Thank you for joining us today, whether in person or by social media, for this January 2nd, 2022 media cast of the Heinz Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. We continue to keep you in prayer. We pray this service has been a blessing to you and that the Lord will use it to draw you close to Him, to trust in Him, and to continue to help you through the week. If you receive the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior today, we rejoice with you in thanking God that you have chosen to put your trust in Christ and invite you to join us as a member of the Highest Memorial family. We also pray that you will continue to receive these services as a means to your discipleship and spiritual growth. Please write to us or email us at HeinzMemorial at gmail.com to let us know how the Lord is blessing you. Thank you for your prayers, presence, participation, and support. Contributions may be mailed in, picked up, or given electronically by downloading the Givelify app and searching for the Heinz Memorial CME Church in Albany, Georgia. Follow the steps in the app to make your contribution. You may also mail your contributions to us at Heinz Memorial CME Church, 408 North Madison Street, Albany, Georgia, 31701. We certainly do want to thank you for your support and contributions and your presence and prayers in 2021. We expect no less. In fact, we expect that God will continue to use you to be a blessing to this ministry and to each other in 2022. Please continue to be safe, wear your mask, sanitize your hands, maintain social distance according to CDC guidelines, and strongly consider receiving a COVID-19 vaccination. We look forward to continuing to serve you in this ministry of Christ through this Heinz Memorial CME Church and this MediaCast ministry. Here are some additional announcements and observations. Daily scripture readings are provided through the online ministry of Vanderbilt University Library. Thank you for your presence in our New Year's Eve worship service on December 31st. If you missed it or would like to view it again, you may do so on Pastor Orr Spragan's YouTube channel. And here is the link to the video. If you received the bulletin, it is also printed in the bulletin. Please minister to our sick, shut-in, and others with your prayers and other acts of support. These include Sister Ella Miller, Sister Mary Williams, Sister Geneva Hill, Sister Juanita Miller, Sister Janet Edwards, Brother Michael Sanderson, Sister Julia Williams Harris, Brother Charles Harris, Sister Fraulein Bradley, Brother Marquavius Mason, Brother Prince Brooks, Brother Keith Lemon, Sister Henrietta Benson, Sister Judith Namasaka and family, Brother Julius Pegues, and Reverend Lydia Spragan. Here is a schedule of activities for this week. On Wednesday, January 5th, we will not have group Bible study Bible study will resume on January 12, 2022 at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. The scriptures for this week are given. The Women's Missionary Society will meet this Wednesday, January 5th at 6.30 p.m. The call-in number is 1-602-580-9626. Access code 448 Eight three nine four. Again, that's the Women's Missionary Society. The call-in number is one six zero two five eight zero nine six two six. The access code is four four eight eight three nine four. We also want to wish a happy birthday to James Black and Regina Bradley on Wednesday, January 5th. And then on January 6th, Thursday, we wish a happy birthday to Marilyn Benton. 
Thank you for joining us in worship today. It is our prayer that you will enjoy your day and that you will join us again next Sunday at 1045 a.m. Eastern Time. Until then, continue in the worship and praise of God. And we pray that God will keep you in his perfect peace. In Jesus' name, amen.